Hello everyone, this is Miss Amy here to do another fun art project together. Today we're going to create this monochromatic coffee mug. And let's see if I can get the light here a little bit. Uh, can you see that okay? The little swirls there in light. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go over our supply list that we need to create this fun project. We will need a piece of watercolor paper or other thick paper, because we are gonna be using watercolors. Um, you will need a pencil and eraser, a black Sharpie, a white oil pastel, and a, either a toothpick or a popsicle stick. Uh, one of those woodcraft popsicle sticks. Either one would, would work fine. You'll need some watercolor paints, a paintbrush, a cup of water and some paper towel. And one more thing, we need a hair dryer to dry our painting. If you don't have a hair dryer, you would just need to let your painting dry before doing the final step. So um, let's go ahead and we're gonna get started on this project. This is one of my favorites because I love coffee. So this was a really fun project for me to teach in some of my classes and the kids have been doing awesome with it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna be drawing some ellipses and lines to get started. Ellipses and lines combined can make all different kinds of containers. You could make flower pots, vases, mugs, cups, cans, whatever kind of container. Just by changing the size of the ellipses or this, the type of lines that you're using to connect them. So I'm gonna show you how to do the coffee mug today and then I encourage you on your own to experiment with different sizes and different lines to create different containers. All right, so we're gonna start about the middle of our paper. We want our paper in portrait direction and then we're going to go ahead and start an ellipse is just a flat oval. So it's kind of an oval shape and I'm just gonna lightly with my pencil create that nice ellipse right there in the middle of my paper. I'm going to come down here a little bit lower and draw a smaller ellipse. Okay and I'm going to connect these two ellipses with lines. So I always connect them at the ends. So right at the ends of the ellipse is where I'm going to connect them. So I'm going to start here at the end. Just draw a little curved line down to the end of that one. Start here at the end of this one and draw a little curved line down to the end of that one. Now, to, to make it look like it's a full cup, I need to erase part of this ellipse down here. So I'm just gonna erase that top part. This is why we write lightly so we can see it, we can erase really easily. All right, so, and we can just fine tune it a little bit if we need to. Okay, I'm gonna fine tune that one just a little bit so it matches my top. I want them to match, the curves to match. So sometimes that takes a little fine tuning. All right, once we have that, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, we'll draw our handle to our mug, but you know what? I'm gonna adjust this line just a little bit. There we go. I wanted to adjust that just a little bit more. All right. So what I'm gonna do to create my handle, I want it to look like it's attached to my mug. So I'm just gonna draw a little curve line there and a little curve line down here. And now I'm going to start at the top and draw my line all the way to the bottom, the bottom of that bottom line there. And then I'm gonna do another one right from the bottom of the top to the top of the bottom and erase all those lines in the middle. And now it looks like I have, my handle is attached to my cup. And I'm gonna draw some liquid in my cup. Now I like coffee, you can make any liquid you want. Just, and we're gonna take a line and draw it following the shape of our ellipsis there. We're gonna, I'm making just a slightly wavy line following that 
Um, so you can see that liquid inside my cup. Um, that looks good. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse down here for this little saucer that my cup is going to sit on. And I'm doing this really lightly because I am going to do some erasing when I get it done. And there, I need to do it a few times to get the shape that I like. Erase everything in here so that we don't see that it's behind the cup. And then I'm going to erase some of these lines I don't need. Choose the one I really like and then go with that one. So I think I'm going to go with that one right there. There we go. And then I can erase all those other lines. Sometimes it takes me a bit to get the ellipse shape that I really like. And that is okay. All right. Now we're going to make a table. Now, if you don't have a ruler handy, you can just grab another piece of paper. So I'll grab my example paper here, line it up be behind my cup somewhere here. And let's see, we want to make sure that you see that straight. There we go. We're going to just trace that right across. If you have a ruler, it works great for a ruler too. But if you don't, a piece of paper works fine. All right, once we have our cup drawn, we're going to go ahead and set our pencil and eraser aside and grab our white oil pastel. If it's been used, you just need to clean it off in your paper towel a little bit. And then we're going to add some patterns to our paper. We want to use a very heavy pressure for this. So let's say if you want hot cocoa in your cup, you can add some marshmallows at this time. I'm going to actually add some steam lines. So I'm just going to make some swirly lines that go right up off the, actually I'm going to make it go right up the top of my paper there. And I'm going to press down really hard, maybe a couple times just to get a nice thick line. Do another one. Just some swirly lines and make it look like steam. And I'm going to hold it up a little bit so you can see it better. There, now you can see it better there. Okay, and then on my mug, I'm going to add, you can add some designs on your mug. Um, you can leave it plain. Um, I like to add a little bit of pattern to my mug. So what I'm going to do is just add some lines and I follow the curve of my ellipse there because I want everything to look like it's rounded. So... I'm not going to do straight lines on there. I'm going to do slightly curved lines. Just I'm just going to add a couple to this cup. I don't want to do a lot because I'm making them pretty thick. So I want to just add a couple. But you can definitely add some different ones. Now, if you get lots of little oil bit, pastel bits on your paper, you just want to tap your paper. Get those off a little bit instead of brushing them off of your hand because that will smear them everywhere. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to add some white to is my table. I want to add a little bit of pattern to my table. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw some straight lines down on my table with a heavy pressure. Nice, thick, heavy pressure. And then I'm going to turn it this way and draw some lines this way. So I have like little checkerboard, little squares on my table, like a little tablecloth. There we go. Tap those little bits of oil pastel off. And brush those out of my way. All right. Now we can start painting with our, our watercolor paints. So um, when we do this, we're going to do a couple different types of painting techniques. We want, we're doing monochromatic, which means we're using one color to create all these different values. The lightest value, the darkest value. And value is just how light or dark something is. So we want to take it and do it with one color. So we're gonna go ahead and make our background really light, then have a medium table, medium value for a table, and our mug will be very dark. 
so you can use whatever color you would like for your to use to do this um, I'm gonna go ahead and use blue just like in my example so I'm gonna start with lots of water so a drippy brush I'm gonna with a drippy brush add that water to a little part of my paper and I'm gonna paint right over my oil pastel and pretend it's not even there Go ahead and get some paint and just add a little bit of paint in there. A little bit of, we just want a little bit of light blue. So I have lots of water, a little bit of blue. If it gets too dark, I'm just going to add a little bit more water and I can spread that around a little bit right up to the edge of my cup. I don't want to go into my cup. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread this around. Add a little bit more water, a little more paint. I really like the wet on wet. It's kind of fun to see the paint go where it kind of wants to go. I'm helping it a little bit because I don't want it to go where it's not supposed to. There, look really light. Now this is a little bit dark down here, so I'm just going to add a bit more water. Spread that around. Okay, now to reach this other side, I'm just going to flip my paper around because it'll be easier than trying to paint around it. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some water down here. Don't worry, your paper may curl up on you. That's normal when you're using watercolor paper. You can tape the edges down if you need to, just putting a little mask or a blue painting tape around your paper on all four sides, all the way around. That will hold it down, but I don't always do that. I sometimes just let it curl on me and then when it dries, it straightens out. But you can tape it down to help, help keep it flat. There, see how light that is? Nice and light blue. Add just a bit more blue in there. Fill up this space. Very nice. So what I'm gonna do with this, since it's kind of watery and put, has little puddles, I'm just gonna wad up my um, paper towel and gently blot it just to soak up a little bit of that extra puddles. And then that's gonna help it dry quicker too. Okay, and I'm going to dry my table just a bit before I go on to the next thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is paint my table. And for this one, I'm not going to put water on my paper first. I'm just going to go ahead with a wet brush, swirl it around my paint, and just start painting normally. Oh, and I like that. That's just a little bit darker than my background and so perfect. And that's just adding a little bit of water and just putting the putting it directly on my paper now you can kind of see it ran into my background a little bit i'm just going to add water to that and blot it with my paper towel and it, that's how you can clean that up go ahead and paint my medium value so there's water in my paint my brush isn't so very wet. I kind of wipe off the extra water, but there's definitely water in my paint tray in the paint pan there. And then if you feel it's getting too dark, you just can add a bit more water to it to lighten it up a little bit. Or you can add more paint to darken it. Now for the cup, there we go. Oh, I forgot a step. I forgot to outline my cup. Oh, we can do that at the end. You can do it at the end or the beginning. That might have helped some of this paint not go over to the other side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and paint the cup now. And I'm going to paint it quite a bit dark. So I, I don't want a drippy brush. I already have a little bit here. I'm going to put just a little bit of water in my paint so that it's a little bit wet. Kind of dry off my brush a little bit and just swirl it in the 
paint with, a, with just a little bit of water and then start painting. And now it's a nice dark blue color. Sometimes you have to keep adding some water in your tray, but I swirl lots of paint on there. Lots of paint. I'm going to go right across. I'm not worried about my oil pastel. I'm going to paint right over that. Okay. Right over the... In watercolor, it's so much easier to paint your lighter paints first, and then you can go over it with your darker... That's why we started with the lightest value. It's just easier that way with watercolors. And my saucer. Okay. Now for the liquid that's in your cup, if you're like me and like coffee, you can paint it the color of coffee. But if you want to have a different liquid in your cup, say you want some milk or you want some tea, you can, or lemonade, you can paint it whatever color you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint it brown for coffee. So I'll put a little water in my brown and just paint it right over that. Paint a little bit of brown in there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and blot some of this because I don't want any puddles. I got a little bit of runoff there. A little bit of blotting, get rid of those puddles. It's going to help it dry a little bit quicker too. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this so that we can finish it together. Okay, once it's dry, we're going to, um, let's outline it quick with our Sharpie before we scrape off our oil pastel. We can do this at the beginning before we paint. Um, I forgot, so I'm going to trace my cup now. This is just going to help it kind of pop a little bit. As you can see, I have my darker value of blue as my cup, my medium value as my table, and my lightest value as my background. All using one color. You can do this with any of the colors. All right, so once you have it outlined, see this pops really nice. We want to take, sometimes when we paint over oil pastel, it can still get to be a little sloppy and look a little faded. So what we're gonna do is you can take a toothpick or you can take a popsicle stick and gently scrape off your oil pastel. And that's just gonna brighten it up a bit. There we go, that looks so much better.
And then when you get done, just be careful not to brush off those um, little little um, pieces of oil pastel. You want to kind of tap them off and brush them gently. There, they'll stand out. So even though there, you can I'll tilt it. You can see it a little bit better. And then we're going to do the going to scrape off that oil pastel. I'm using the side of my stick and just gently scraping. I don't want to scrape so hard that it's going to rip my paper. You just want to scrape just enough to scrape off. And it, it doesn't have to be perfectly white because when you put the oil pastel on, it wasn't perfectly put on. So it won't go scrape perfectly white, but it'll sure brighten things up and looks really cool. And then you want to do that on the table too. So continue um, just scratching off that. This is the final step to your picture. So once you have this done, now if you don't have a hair dryer, you can just let it air dry. And then when it's completely dry, you can go back and scrape off the oil pastel. But I do recommend that you trace it with a Sharpie before you paint it. It just works a little better that way. There we go. Gently brush those off. From there. And now I have a beautiful cup of coffee with some steam and some patterns. Awesome. All right, thank you for joining me for this monochromatic coffee mug project. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to send me a picture of your finished project. I would love to see it. All right, have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye-bye.